Hello friends. So welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So the next lecture is on rank of a matrix. What do you mean by rank and how it is important to solve system of linear equations we will see in this lecture and in the next lecture. So uh, before defining rank of a matrix let us see what do you mean by linear dependent or linear independent of elements of Rn or Cn. So let v1, v2 up to vk, let us suppose these are k elements of Rn or Cn. What do you mean by Rn? Rn means all those uh, x1, x2 up to xn such that xi belongs to R for all i. That means Rn is simply a set of n tuples such that each xi belongs to R. Now, if you think about Cn, then Cn is simply all x1, x2 up to xn such that xi belongs to set of complex numbers for all i. Okay. Now, in this definition, this v1, v2 up to vk are the elements or vectors, we also call it vectors in Rn or Cn. Okay. That means, each, each vi is in, is uh, consist of set of n tuples, which is in either in Rn or in Cn. Then these elements or vectors are said to be linearly dependent or LD if there exist scalars alpha 1, alpha 2 up to alpha k not all 0 such that alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus and so on up to alpha k v k equal to 0. Okay. And if the equation 1 is satisfied only for alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to alpha k equal to 0 that is all alpha is are 0 then these vectors are called linearly independent. Now, let us understand what do we mean by this. Now, you have uh, you have vectors this is v1, v2 up to vk. Let us suppose this belongs to Rn each each vi belongs to Rn. Okay. Now, you take you take alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus and so on up to alpha k v k. This is called linear combination of v1 v2 up to v k. These alpha is are some scalars, some constants. Okay. Now, this you change alpha is this, this v will change. Okay. If you change alpha, you vary alpha is this v will change, but all v are simply the linear combination of elements of v i's. Okay. Now, if alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 equal plus and so on up to alpha k v k equal to 0, this implies alpha i equal to 0 for all i from 1 to k, then we say that uh, then we say that v 1, v 2 up to v k are linearly independent. That means, you take a linear combination of v 1, v 2 up to v k, put it equal to 0 and there exists only one solution which is alpha equal to 0 for all i. That means, v 1, v 2 up to v k are linearly independent vectors or elements. Okay. Now, if, if we are taking alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 plus and so on up to alpha k v k and this equal to 0 implies there exists at least, at least 1 alpha i which is not equal to 0. Okay. Then, then v 1, v 2 up to v k are called linearly dependent. Okay. Let us suppose 
let us suppose that alpha i which is not equal to 0 is alpha p ok is alpha p. So, let alpha p is not equal to 0 where p is between 1 to k p is any element between 1 to k ok. Then you leave alpha p v p in this side and all the remaining terms over here on the right hand side. So, this will be minus alpha 1 v 1 minus alpha 2 v 2 and so on minus alpha p minus 1 v p minus 1 minus alpha p plus 1 v p plus 1 and so on minus alpha k v k. And since alpha p is not equal to 0, so you can always divide by alpha p. So, this implies v p will be equal to minus alpha 1 alpha p v 1 minus alpha 2 upon alpha p v p and so on minus alpha p minus 1 upon alpha p v p minus 1 minus alpha p plus 1 upon alpha p v p plus 1 minus alpha k upon alpha p into v k. So, yeah ok. So, uh, so that means what this is alpha 2. So, that means what that means that means if vectors are linearly dependent then there exists at least one vector which can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors. So, so you can always put it some beta 1, you can always take it some beta 2, you can always some take it some say beta p minus 1 and so on. So, what, what I want to say that if vectors are linearly dependent, then there always exists at least one vector or one element in that set which can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors. And if vectors are linearly independent, then none of the vector can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors. Okay. Now, let us discuss this thing by few examples. So, what do you mean by linearly independent or dependent vectors? Let us discuss all these things. So, the first problem is this is 1 2 then 0 2 and then 3 4 these vectors are in R 2 ok these vectors are in R 2. We have to see whether this set of vectors are linearly independent or dependent. Now, you can you can simply see here if you see the uh, if you see uh, by observation you can see you can always see that 3 comma 4 can be expressed as 3 times 1 comma 2 plus uh, either uh, it is 0 comma 2 you see it is 3 times that is 3. Now, you want 4. So, it is 6 6 minus 2 ok it must be 1 it is 6 minus 2 is 4 ok. So, we have expressed this vector 3 comma 4 as a linear combination of these two vectors. So, what does it mean? It means that these vectors are linearly dependent. So, this is linearly dependent L d this set is L d ok, because we have expressed one vector as a linear combination of the remaining vectors. Other way out is other way out is you take a linear combination of these vectors ok and put it equal to 0. So, what does it imply? It imply it is alpha 1 plus 0 plus 3 alpha 3 comma it is 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 plus 4 alpha 3 equal to 0 0. So, this implies this is equal to 0 0 means each component is 0 that means alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 3 is equal to 0 and 2 alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 plus 4 alpha 3 equal to 0. Now, this is you see we are we are having two equations and there are three unknowns and equation is homogeneous right hand side is 0 ok. So, you can arbitrarily choose any value of alpha 3 may not be 0 ok then you can find out alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, that means there exist there exist uh, some alpha which is not equal to 0 and that means that this set of vectors are linearly dependent 
ok. Now, uh, now for a second problem if you see a second problem 2 1 0 it is 1 0 2 and 0 1 2 ok these are in R 3 and you have to see whether this set of vectors are linearly independent or dependent. So, you take the linear combination of these vectors ok put it equal to 0 ok. So, this implies uh, 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 2 equal to 0 then uh, alpha 1 plus alpha 3 equal to 0 and then 2 alpha 1 alpha 2 plus 2 alpha 3 equal to 0 ok. So, what does it imply from here we are getting alpha 2 as minus 2 alpha 1 when we substitute it here it here we are getting uh, from here it is uh, minus 2 alpha 1 plus alpha 3 equal to 0 that means alpha 3 is equals to 2 alpha 1 ok. And when we substitute it over here in this equation alpha 1 is alpha 1 and alpha 3 is 2 alpha 1 it is equal to 0. So, this implies alpha 1 equal to 0 ok. And when you substitute alpha 1 equal to 0 here from here we are getting alpha 2 equal to 0 and from here we are getting alpha 3 equal to 0. So, that means we are getting only one solution which is a 0 solution that means all alpha is a 0 alpha 1 is 0 alpha 2 is 0 alpha 3 is 0 it is the only solution of this equation that means this uh, these vector are linearly independent. Now, if you take this set 0 0 0 1 2 3 and 4 5 3 4 5 the next example next problem. Now, this is clearly linearly de, uh, dependent why it is linearly dependent because this this vector 0 0 0 this 0 0 0 can always be expressed as 0 times 1 2 3 plus 0 times 3 4 5 that means that means one of the vector of this set can be expressed as linear combination of remaining two vectors this means set is LD set is linearly dependent. Now, if you see the next uh, problem it is uh, 2 3 4 then minus 1 4 2 then 1 7 6 ok. Now, you have to see whether this set is L i or L d. So, you take linear combination of these three vectors put it equal to 0 and if you find only one solution that is all alpha is at 0 that means, uh, this vectors are linearly independent otherwise linearly dependent. One thing you can easily observe that uh, this vector is equal to the sum of these two vectors see 2 minus 1 is 1 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 2 is 6 that means 1 7 6 is equal to 1 times 2 3 4 plus 1 time minus 1 4 2. So, that means one vector can be expressed as linear combination of the remaining vectors this means this clearly means set is LD that is linearly dependent ok. So, in this way we can check whether set is linearly dependent or independent. Now, we will see some properties of uh, dependent or linearly independent sets. The first property is any set containing 0 element is always L d this is very easy to show you see if you are having any set containing 0 element then, then that 0 element can always be expressed as linear combination of the remaining vectors where scalars are all 0. Okay. So, since this 0 vector can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors, so the set is clearly L d. As we have also seen one of the example uh, you see uh, we have already seen in this example the third example that how why this set is L d because this 0 0 0 can be expressed as 0 time this plus 0 time this that means this this vector 0 vector can be expressed as linear combination of remaining two vectors. Okay. The next property is any set S which is a subset of R n containing n plus 1 or more elements is always L d. Okay, this is easy to prove you see 
you see we have some set say v1 v2 up to vn up to vn plus k suppose and all vi's are in rn okay so this is a set uh, containing uh, containing n plus 1 or more elements hmm k is uh, k is greater than or equal to 1 so this set is containing n plus 1 or more elements and each vi is you see uh, if you are talking about v1 so v1 is in rn that means it is v11 it is v12 and so on up to v1n and similarly if you talk about vi so vi is simply vi1 vi2 and so on up to vi n for all i okay now if you take the linear combination of this vector so v alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 and so on up to alpha n plus 1 v alpha n plus p v n plus p equal to 0 now when you substitute v1 from here to here similarly v2 which is a uh, n tuples uh, n tuple set of n tuples okay similarly v n plus p then when you multiply with alpha 1 multiply L v2 by alpha 2 and so on you will get n equations with n plus p unknowns okay p n plus k sorry it is n plus k here it is k okay here also it is k so we are getting n equations with n plus k unknowns k is greater than equal to 1 so more unknowns and equations are less that means many solutions and many solutions means there exists non zero solution and non zero solution means set is ld set is linearly dependent so, so this set is always LD. Okay. The third property is, if the set is LD, then any superset of it is also LD. Okay. Uh, this is uh, again easy to show. You see, if we have a set, say V1, V2 up to say VP, say this set is LD. So, if this set is LD that means there exist uh, that means there exists some uh, vk where k is between p to 1 such that such that this vk can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors okay alpha p vp now take a superset of this set say superset is v1 v2 up to uh, vp and so on up to say vp plus m take a superset of this set containing elements more than this containing this set and some more elements now if if uh, alpha k can be expressed as linear combination of the remaining vectors then this alpha k can also be written as alpha 1 v 1 and so on up to alpha k minus 1 v k minus 1 plus alpha k plus 1 v k plus 1 plus alpha p v p plus 0 times remaining vectors. Okay. That means that means linear combination of remaining vectors so this set will also become linearly dependent because we have expressed one element vk which in the, which is in this set and can be expressed as linear combination of remaining vectors okay so this set is also lt so we have shown that if you have any set which is ld then any super set of this set is also ld okay the next uh, property is if a set is li then any subset of it is also li if it is not if any subset of it is not li then uh, then it is ld and if it is ld then the superset uh, of this set will also be ld however it is li so this contradict uh, statement 3 
Okay. So, therefore, if a set is Li, then any subset of it is also Li. Now, come to the rank of rank of a matrix, how we define rank of a matrix. Say we are having a matrix of order m cross n, then the rank of matrix A denoted by R A or rank of A is defined as the number of non-zero rows in the echelon form of a matrix. We have already discussed echelon form of a matrix. Now, number of non-zero rows in the echelon form is called its rank or it can also be defined as maximum number of linearly independent rows or column of the matrix A. Okay. If you take, if you take, you see, if you take, uh, if you have a matrix say A11, A12 and so on up to A1n, A21, A22 and so on A2n, it is of order m cross n. Now, you take the first column say C 1 as a 1 vector, the second column as a second vector and the third this mth column as a mth uh, vector. Okay. Okay. Sorry, it is n. Okay. If this uh, number of linearly independent vectors, number of independent columns is the rank. I mean we are taking the one column as a one vector, the second column as a second vector, the nth column as a nth vector. Similarly, if you take the row, the first row as a first vector R1 and the nth row, mth row as a mth vector. So, the number of linearly independent rows or columns considering one column as a one vector or considering one row as a one vector. Okay. So, number of rows or number of linearly independent rows or columns is the rank of the matrix. Okay. Now, let us discuss few examples, you see. Now, this is a matrix A. Now, uh, this is the echelon form of some matrix, it is clear because uh, so you see the first leading non-zero element is 1 in the first row and in the um, uh, below this all elements are 0. The in the second row the uh, first leading non-zero element is 2 and below this all elements are 0 and all rows containing uh, only 0 element are at the bottom of the matrix. Okay. So, now how many number of uh, non-zero rows it is having? It is having only 2 rows, first row and the second row. So, that we can say the rank of this matrix is 2. Okay. We can also say like this you see this vector 1 2 1 can never be expressed as alpha times 0 to 4. Okay. So, these two vectors are linearly independent. So, maximum number of linearly independent rows which this matrix is having is only 2. Okay. So, rank of this matrix is 2. Now, see here if you have this matrix the first row is 2 2 3 the second row is minus 2 minus 2 minus 3 third row is 6 6 9 now if you multiply the first row with minus 1 you will get the second row that means the second row is simply minus 1 time the first row okay so that means these two rows are linearly dependent similarly if you multiply this first row by 3 you will get the third row. That means, this row and this row is also dependent. So, how many maximum number of linearly independent rows which this matrix is having? Only one that is 2, 2, 3 because other two rows are linearly dependent on the first row. So, maximum number of linearly independent rows which this matrix is having only one. So, the rank of this matrix is 1. You can also you can also find the echelon form of this matrix and then you can see the number of non-zero rows with this matrix is having. Now, let us find the echelon form of these matrices, uh, I mean echelon form and then the rank. Now, what the matrix you are having? It is 1, 3, minus 1, 2 and 2, 1. Let us find the echelon form of this matrix. The echelon form will be you see 1, 3. You will make 0 here with the help of this. So, how you will make this? In the in R 2, you will apply R 2 plus R 1. 
So that will be 0, this is 5. You will again make 0 here with the help of this, that is R3, you will take R3 minus 2 times R1. So that is 0, this minus 2 times this and this minus 2 times this is minus 5. Okay. Now in this, in this, this is the first non-zero element, you will make 0 in the bottom. So in the third row again, you will take R3 plus R2. So, what will the final form? 1, 3, 0, 5, 0, 0. So, what is the equilon form of uh, this? This is the equilon form of this matrix and what is the rank? Rank will be simply rank of this matrix. If this matrix is A, the rank of this matrix is simply 2 because number of non-zero rows are 2. Okay. In fact, if it, it is this order is 3 cross 2, you see, the uh, order of this matrix is 3 cross 2. This is 3 cross 2. So, rank can never be more than 2, okay. because, because whatever element you are having here, you, you will always make 0 with the help of this to convert this matrix into its Cleon form. So, maximum linearly independent rows or maximum non-zero rows which this matrix is having is only 2. Okay. It, may be, it may be less than 2 also, but the maximum is only 2. You see, if you are having this type of matrix 1, 2, 2, 4 and then uh, 3, 6, what is the clown form of this matrix? 1, 2, 0, 0 and then again 0, 0. So, the rank of this matrix is simply, if this is B, the rank of this matrix is simply 1. Okay. So, what I want to say that if it, if a matrix has an, having an order M cross N, the rank of this matrix can never exceed n and similarly can never exceed m. So, it will be always less than or equals to minimum of m or n. Okay. Now, uh, you have second example, suppose it is 2 minus 1, 4, 5, 4, 2, 2, 1. So, it is having 2 rows and 4 columns. Of course, by simply seeing the order of the matrix, I can say that rank of this matrix if it is A, then rank of this matrix is always less than or equal to 2. This I can say surely because rank of a matrix is always less than or equal to minimum of M or N because rank can never exceed M and can never exceed N. Now, the Cleon form of this matrix is 2 minus 1, 4, 5. You have to make 0 here with the help of this to find its Cleon form. So, this row in R2, you will make a uh, elementary row transformation R2 minus 2 times R1. So, it is 0, this minus 2 times this is 4, this minus 2 times this is minus 6, this minus 2 times this is minus uh, 9. So, how many number of non-zero rows it is having? It is having 2 rows. So, we can say the rank of A is 2. Okay. Now, the next problem is Suppose you want to find out the conditions on alpha and beta for which this matrix is rank 1, 2 or 3. So, this is also a simple problem, let us try to find it. So, what are the matrix we are having? Matrix is alpha 1, 2, it is uh, 0, 2 beta, it is 1, 3, 6. So, first find its Eclion form and then only we can say the rank of this matrix A. So, so for Eclion form, uh, it is alpha and it is 0. So, first uh, you will because it is a parameter alpha which may be 0 also we do not know. So, first uh, interchange the third row with the first row. Okay. So, it is 1 3 6, it is 0 2 beta, it is uh, alpha 1 2. We have make R 3 a with R 1, interchange R 3 with R 1. Now, it is 1 3 6, it is 0 2 beta you make 0 here with the help of this. So, this minus alpha time this is 0, this minus alpha time this is 1 minus 3 alpha, this minus alpha time this is 2 minus 6 alpha. Now, you will for the Cleon form you will make 0 here with the help of this. Again you will make elementary row transformation 1 3 6 0 2 beta, it is 0, it is uh, 0, what uh, operation you have applied in R 3 it is R3 minus 1 by uh, 2 times, 
it is 1 minus 3 alpha times uh, r 2 ok to make 0 here and the same operation you will apply here. So, what we will obtain you see it is 2 minus 6 alpha minus 1 minus 3 alpha by 2 times beta. So, what you will get it is 1 minus 3 alpha into 4 minus beta upon 2. So, this element will be 1 minus 3 alpha into 4 minus beta upon 2. Now, now for which values of alpha and beta rank of this matrix is 1? You see this element is non zero. So, rank will always be 2 or more than 2, rank is either 2 or 3, rank can never be 1. So, the first one the answer is for rank 1 no, al no alpha beta because this case is not possible. I mean not possible this case is not possible for no values of alpha and beta rank is 1 ok. Now, for rank rank 2 now rank of this matrix is 2 if this quantity is 0 and this quantity because if this is 0 then we are having 1 0 row ok. Now, this this uh, entire row cannot be 0 because this is 2 ok. So, rank will be 2 if uh, either alpha is 1 by 3 or beta is 4 and rank of A will be 3 if this is not equal to 0. So, that means alpha should not equal to 1 by 3 and beta should not equal to 4. So, whenever you want to find out equilion form of any m cross n matrix you first write its equilion form and then try to find its number of non zero rows from number of non zero rows you can find its uh, equal, uh, i mean from number of non zero rows you can find its rank now we have some properties of rank of a matrix the first property is rank of only zero matrix is zero only the null matrix has a rank zero okay of course, rank of a matrix can never be in fraction because it is number of non zero rows ok. Elementary row and column operations of a matrix are rank preserving that means it does not change the rank of a matrix. If you apply row operations or you apply column operations it will not alter the rank of the matrix rank, rank remain the same because it is number of maximum number of linear independent rows or columns ok and hence rank of A is same as rank of A transpose. Rank of C times A where C is any non zero scalar is always equal to rank of A you see if you multiply a matrix by a non zero scalar it will not change the number of linearly maximum number of linearly independent rows or columns it is having. So, rank will remain the same this I have already explained that rank of A is always less than equals to minimum of M or N. Now, if if you have a square matrix of order n cross n and rank is n. Now, if rank is n this means uh, mat matrix does not have any all 0 row because it order of the matrix is n, n cross n and rank is n that means it does not have any in the equilion form of the matrix it does not have any row containing all 0 elements and that means the determinant of the matrix is not equal to 0 ok. Because, because we have already discussed this thing that uh, uh, suppose uh, A is a matrix and B is equilion form, B is its equilion form then determinant of A is some alpha time determinant of B where alpha is not equal to 0 ok. So, if if this uh, um, if uh, equilion form does not have any 0 I mean uh, all 0 row it is a square matrix ok then uh, determinant is not equal to 0. So, determinant of A will not be equal to 0 ok and if determinant is not equal to 0 that means uh, the equilion form of the matrix uh, uh, does not have any row which contain all 0 that means rank of that matrix is n. 
so from here we can also conclude that if rank of a matrix is less than n which is n minus 1 n minus 2 or any other thing okay then determinant of a is always zero because if rank of a matrix is less than n minus 1 that means it contains at least one row containing all zero element so determinant of the echelon form of the matrix is zero and hence the determinant of the original matrix is also zero okay so these are some of the properties of rank of a matrix so thank you